Hello, my divinities. Welcome, welcome. So, as we prepare our little space here, I want to say thank you to those of you who are here um, on Patreon supporting me. If you are on Facebook as a, as a subscriber as well, I'm also very, very grateful for you guys. Um, this is my main source of income. And I remind you guys because I want you to to know how much I appreciate you, that I don't forget each and every one of you. Um, it really means a lot to me, all the support I've been given. Hold on. There we go. Um, so yeah, <laughs> just wanted to mention that. That being said, let's get into today's reading. So let's actually, let's put this up here. We are going to start today. We're using the um, Black Moon Lilith. I think it's called the, no, just the Black Moon Astrology Cards. And then this is the Naked Heart Tarot. And this is the, the pocket version or the mini version of the Wild Unknown Tarot. So that's what we got. Let's get started. What is the message for today? Mercury Mind number three. Okay, so let's see. Let's see number three. And this one I'm only drawn to pull one, so we're going to just do one card. And let's see if on the second collective we do more. We'll see. Number three, number three. Okay, so it says, if you want to tell people the truth make them laugh otherwise they'll kill you oscar wilde <laughs> wow oh that's sad um so it says mercury the planet of intelligence and talking is the closest planet to the sun also making it the fastest planet to move through the zodiac the mercury card suggests you must put effort behind your talk the god mercury is the roman counterpart of the greek god hermes the messenger with wings at his heels and on his hat Connected to everything associated with the mind, quick wit, brevity, mental flights, trickery, inspiration, and also movement, as in moving ahead and also transits. Mercury gives poetry to the imagination since the god Mercury and Hermes are related to the Egyptian god Thoth, god of writing, patron of scribes, and those who work as, a divine, as divine mediators and interpreters. The god Mercury and his counterparts also have very much to do with magic and medicine. When it comes to the body, Mercury rules the eyes, brains, nerves, as well as the fingers and toes. In ancient Greek, Greece, Hermes was the god of roads and transportation and was the son of Apollo, the sun god. This makes sense, Mercury being the closest planet to the sun. Mercury is also a comedian and can be a bit of a trickster. Just when the energy seems to be flowing one way, Mercury changes the direction. Might we add, Mercury is spontaneous and insanely flexible. Um, Mercury is the wisdom and the stupidity <laughs> found in intelligence when it is not connected to the heart or the feelings. Mercury maximizes the imagination but can also symbolize the liar when it comes to double talk with mixed meanings. It is the planet of gaslighting causing purposeful confusion in the minds of others to gain something not really deserved. However, Mercury shows how mentally sharp and flexible we are, our mental range, and how eloquent. Mercury tends to be chatty, superficial, and into playing games, psychological games, and other types of puzzles. Mercury governs friendly relationships and also the Freudian slip, where you say something that doesn't come out as intended but actually reveals your true thoughts. When the Mercury card presents itself in a reading, it is time to use all of your mental faculties to get your point across. Words and how you use them are very significant. It may mark a period where you either have to talk your way out of something or talk your way into something. Whatever the reason or occurrence, how you communicate through writing or speaking is of utmost importance here. Composition, writing or editing may figure in. It is not a time to stay static or to sit still. Beware of gossip and other scandals. The important thing to remember is that what you say in this situation can and will be used against you. So choose your words wisely. The planet Mercury also rolls over technology, so if your question is about career or a job, you can be certain mastering some newer form of technology is about to come into play. Since Mercury is the planet of speed, you can expect to see fast developments. 
Regarding romance or relationships, it can mean that friendship is the best option for you now. The time has not yet ripened to enter a relationship with the person. You may attract partners and perhaps friends who are non-emotional, highly rational, and objective. These lovers or friends may be offended by flip, flippant remarks or joking over serious matters. You may become involved with someone who double talks, is witty, but does not emotionally connect. This is also the card of brothers and sisters as well as twins. And I'm going to add my own twin flames as well. Now marks a period which involves observation, reasoning, taking things apart and putting them back together as they were or in your own order. It is the time of flighty emotions and matters developing quickly. Mercury also signifies travels, maps, and staying in motion. So you may be going on a trip, a more noteworthy vacation than the usual trips you take. The matter in question is best served by using intellect, weighing the matter, being reasonable, and also being spontaneous in your responses. Codes and forms of magic may also figure in. Mercury brings on keen awareness, so use your mind and what you know to the fullest in this matter. So, in brief, it represents writing, words, being good with words and numbers, counting, the number seven, books, magazines, libraries, reading voraciously, the post office, mail, the internet, telecommunications, software, speech, impromptu speaking, incessant talking, <laughs> communication, debates, the key to knowledge, teachers and education, having deep penetrating perception, exactitude, sharpening your wit, comedy, using humor, maps and following maps, vehicles, roads, staying in motion, speed, swiftness, siblings, youth and appearing youthful, eyes, fingers, the brain and the voice box, merchants and anything, anything mercantile, being versatile, being adaptable, being being expressive and animated as above, so below, playing pranks, being a trickster, lying when the truth serves you better, remaining elusive, talking while not listening, being hard to pin down, remaining deft and outwitting any opponents. So key ideas, speaking, traveling, speed, co coordination, adeptness, arguments, glibness, and technology. Okay. By the way, it said that number seven was important, but three is important because Gemini, uh, which is, you know, Mercury, rules the third house and also the sixth house because Virgo is also ruled by Mercury. But I want to add another one. <laughs> there's there's four numbers. The The book said number seven, but I want to add number three, number six because of Virgo and then number five because in numerology, Mercury is number five. So in case any of those numbers are important to you, maybe this is your read. Let's see. What does this have to do with today's collective? I just realized I have like some trash here. <laughs> okay, anyways. What does this have to do with today's collective? Okay. So we've got Temperance. Skyfather. Spirit of Wands. And Spirit of Pentacles. Huh. So this is about a Divine Masculine. Oh, oh, for sure. The magician. And yes, Mercury, the, the tarot card it's associated with is the magician. Ten of Cups, strength. Mm. Interesting. Hold on, guys. Give me one second. Okay, so this feels like a divine masculine who is possibly... Huh, possibly connecting to their higher self. Because Skyfather is emperor energy. It's the 3D divine masculine. But the magician is the 5D divine masculine. And then we have temperance, which is about blending, right? So this may be somebody with the spirit of wands and spirit of pentacles. This may be somebody who is very passionate. But with the spirit of pentacles, which is king of pentacles, basically. This may be somebody who, who kind of doesn't believe in things that they can't touch, taste, or smell. You know, they're, they're guided by their senses. And with the magician energy, you, you're going to have to step outside of your basic five senses to be able to, you know, tap into other realms. So this could very well indicate a divine masculine who is awakening in the sense that maybe before they were somebody who was very led by their mind, it had to be logical all the time. I wouldn't be surprised if the King of Swords came out. King of Swords, King of Pentacles, to me, would be the hardest to convince of, <laughs> of anything outside of 
their current reality. Um, but I also think because Mercury is the mind and it was talking about Thoth, the god of knowledge, right? This person could have started doing research. And if you notice, this emperor has all this cosmic energy surrounding him, right? So this person could have started doing research to the point where it's like their mind was blown is what I feel here. Like their mind was opened to possibilities, a lot of possibilities that perhaps they used to not consider or they used to not think were viable or real. And now this person is, is starting to realize that there's more, there's more to the universe. They're allowing, they're connecting with their water energy. Which, yes, it does take a lot of courage to do that because, <laughs> I mean, this is something, how to put this? It is, it is usually discouraged in a masculine to tap into their feminine energy, right? Which means like when they're, when they're being intuitive, when they're being emotional, when they're being creative, it's all looked down on. Like that's not masculine. So it does take courage for this person to tap into this, especially if there's somebody who's usually led by their mind. Let's clarify. Tell me about temperance. Okay, these came out first. So we're going to start four of cups, five of cups. The five of, oh, five of wands, three of swords. With the daughter of pentacles, eight of wands, four of wands. Hmm. This is interesting. Um, pain is teaching this person. I'm not sure what happened, but Four of Cups, they, they, there was something that the universe was offering them. And they were not interested. And now they're full of regret, full of sorrow. They're embattled with themselves. And through their heartbreak, through their pain, they started understanding something. It was like some sort of realization hit them. And this is Mercury and Sagittarius. So again, it's higher learning. Some sort of cosmic truth. I don't know why I feel cosmic truth. It wasn't just a, an understanding about a person or about themselves. It's some sort of cosmic truth hit them right in the chest. And they weren't expecting it. It has solidified to where now it's like, you know, that thing um, where once you see it, you can't unsee it. <clears throat> Something has connected this masculine to cosmic energy, to, to the universe. And they feel like, oh, my God, this is new. They feel like a student. This is very, very new to them. It's like... <laughs> It's almost like they opened their, their eyes, which is actually their third eye. And it's almost like now they're in the middle of an ocean. They're just like, oh my God. But once they're there, they can't disconnect from it. Interesting. Let's see. Tell me about Skyfather. Mother of Wands. Tell me about Skyfather. The Hermit. Two of Pentacles. The world, I'm telling you. Six of Wands. Oof, Nine of Swords. Okay. So, this, this could be like the dark night of the soul. The pain that this emperor went through put them through the dark night of the soul. And they're coming out of it. They're now finally coming out of this dark night of the soul, a, a changed person, a transformed person. They leveled up. Oh, this is exciting. I'm so excited because, oh, isn't it so refreshing to hear that there are masculines out there awakening to their spiritual self? Oh, that is such a relief, honestly. Thank goodness. Thank goddess. So, they're leveling up and the level up is that now they're not just a 3D emperor, they're connecting with their 5D, their cosmic self. Now, 
this could have been helped by this mother of wands, whoever this queen of wands is, because they're showing up as a king of wands. This could have been somebody that they just broke up with. This could have been somebody that they had some sort of connection with. Um, there seems to be silence with hermit energy here. There's two meanings with the hermit energy is what I feel. On one hand, there's silence between this emperor, king of wands and queen of wands. There's silence between them now. There's a retreat. But something that the queen of wands taught them, because the hermit is a teacher, they, they share knowledge, right? This is a lamp. They are... Um, What's it called? <sighs> Illuminating the way for this person. And maybe with the Four of Cups, initially they rejected it. Maybe that's why there was a breakup and they were like, no, that's, that's a little too out there for me or something like that. But now that they've had time, they processed it, they digested it. It led to transformation. Oh, well. Well, well, hold on. Let me move these up. Otherwise, I won't have room later and then it'll be a mess. Okay. Let's see. Tell me about Spirit of Wands or the King of Wands. Tell me about Spirit of Wands. Three of Wands. Oh, I bent that one. Three of Cups. moon the the emperor six of swords so this is somebody who's tapping into their feminine but but in a good way right they're not this is not taking away from their masculinity a true divine feminine has to have tapped into her masculine right same thing a true divine masculine has to be able to tap into their feminine that's how they have the, within themselves that are already balanced. And then when they do come together with their divine counterpart, it's just to share the wholeness. They're not there to complete each other. They're there to share that wholeness with each other. So this is somebody who's tapping it. I'm telling you, they went through a dark night. This, this might have been the first or the most intense, maybe, dark night. But they came out more solid, more... Um, yeah, like they, they came out the other side. <sighs> like I'm feeling this sigh of relief. Like, oh, <laughs> like they feel like they just came out of a. Remember when I said the ocean, right? Imagine that they were submerged and they finally came up to the surface and they can breathe. There's that relief of like <gasps> taking a deep breath. <laughs> but it's great. It's great. They they survived. They went through it. They might have had to face some really harsh truths. Um, they might have had to face some fears. They might have had to deal with some of their insecurities. But now they're out and they feel like all of a sudden they have a vision about the future. And here's the thing. The wonderful, wonderful thing about our energy is that we all have the ability to see the same things. But when we are, um, we, we have all these experiences that we went through. I want you to look at each experience that we went through almost like a pair of glasses. The more difficult experiences you went through, the more those pairs of glasses pile up on each other, right? So we all have the ability to see the same thing, but depending on how many pairs of glasses you have, it'll distort what you're looking at. And especially if you haven't addressed that. So when you address your wounds, you look at those those um, moments and those experiences and rewire your brain. It's like you're removing one pair at a time until finally you can see clearly. So this is the first time that this emperor feels like they can see clearly. But it's also shocking. It's like they see the whole the world in a whole new way. It almost feels like the world has tilted on its axis for this person. But it's also giving them hella confidence. <laughs> I feel like this person's going to go around telling their friends. Um, because again, it's giving them this fire, this confidence of like, I've got to share this. Uh, which is wonderful. That is exactly what we want. Because most, you know, well, I'm not going to say most men. But men don't usually correct other men, right? So they, they, and it's not just a man thing. Let's be real. That's a human thing. Most humans, let me correct that. Most humans struggle to correct the people around them. So if people around them say things that are racist, say things that are misogynistic, say things that are, you know, 
um, whatever. They're inappropriate in some way. Most people, you know, they're like, oh, I didn't want to cause trouble. I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't want to say anything. This person is not, no. They just gained some fire. And now they're like, let's talk about this. So whatever conversations in the past used to be difficult for this person, no more. No more. Um, in fact, as they connect with their feminine energy, daughter of cups, they're also connecting to their creativity. And, and on that... When it comes to their creativity, they're a little shy, but we have uh, Mercury also represents writing, editing, um, writing like a story, poetry, information, knowledge, facts. So maybe this person is writing something and they're a little shy about it. But at the same time, they're like, I've got to do this. They feel like it's it's part of uh, the reason why they had this awakening which is most likely true. So they, they feel like I have to share the inspiration I'm getting. Oh, how lovely. Tell me about the spirit of pentacles. <laughs> okay, mother of pentacles. Tell me about the spirit of pentacles, which is the king of pentacles. Eight of swords. Father of Cups, Seven of Pentacles, the Son, Daughter of Pentacles. So this is so interesting to me because this is an emperor, but they showed up also with King of Wands, King of Pentacles energy. And then we have a feminine showing up in Queen of Wands, Queen of Pentacles energy. So I have a feeling that these two may be divine counterparts and the feminine has already awoken. Maybe this person wasn't ready at the time. And now that they've awoken, they're, they're coming into their spiritual self. They're realizing she was right the whole time. She was right. I just wasn't, you know, in the place to accept what she was saying. So now they have, it's like they have this, um, clear vision, especially regarding themselves and this feminine. Seven of Pentacles. They know where they want to invest. They want to invest in her. It's clear. Clear as day. They also, it's like they're excited about what they want to share. They want to share what they saw. They want to share what the experiences that they went through. Um, whatever it is that, that led to this awakening, they're excited to share it with this feminine. But at the same time, there is still hesitation there. They know that she'll receive them well because over here they're showing up as as a fawn, right? And here we have the the fawn curled up next to the mama, so they know that the feminine will receive them well. At least their inner child, their spiritual self, will be received well. They they're not sure if their love will be received well. So there is some worry there. I think that this person has transformed in a lot of ways, but when it comes to this specific feminine, they might still be a little. I don't want to say intimidated because it's not fear. It's like there's still some worry. I'm not sure why, but let's see. Let's see. Next row. So we've got the Nine of Wands. The Two of Swords. Movement of Cups. Heart of Wands. There's that Queen of Wands. <laughs> see eight of swords came out over here and here it is again there it is <laughs> two of cups and the ten of pentacles <sighs> you know most of us do this honestly most of us have a tendency to glorify what we really want and we, we glorify it so much. We, we see it as something so amazing and so wonderful that it seems almost impossible that it could be given to us because we want it so badly. Kind of like, oh, how to put it? Somebody that's starving and they don't have money to buy food. To them, being gifted food seems so out of this world. 
So they would, they would be so grateful for that because it's what they want. Someone that's so thirsty and they don't, maybe they don't have money to buy a drink at the moment. If somebody just handed them a giant bottle of water that's ice cold on a hot day, they'd be so grateful. They, they would see that like, oh my God, I can't believe you give me this. Because when we really want something, it seems to be like the most, the furthest thing we can reach is what it feels like. And so this person is struggling with that. This king who is awakening, this emperor, they know who their twin flame is. They already know. They know, they, they, the fact that we have an elephant here means that they remember every single moment they spent with this feminine. But there's also fear. Let's, let's read the message that comes with this eight of swords because this one is a little different. Let's see. With this eight of swords, the message is self-doubt, constraint, and release. The naked heart message says, as I tune into my words, I hear my thoughts. As I start to connect to the thoughts, I can slowly start to see the patterns they create and where my self-doubt is rising from. As I come to realize they are only thoughts and patterns of thoughts are not truths, I can start to release their power. I choose to strengthen the thoughts, the mind, the thoughts that empower me and release the constraints from the ones that no longer serve me. Healing the core beliefs behind the doubt will start to generate new thought patterns and new behaviors will follow. As the energy starts to shift, my personal power will cultivate. My present and future self will thank me as I continue to rise and bloom. So it says, you have the power to break free, loving spirit. And you need to ask yourself, do I fully accept and love myself for who I am and where I have come from? Because that's what it comes down to, right? There's fear here. Well, fear about what? <sighs> that they might not be accepted. That they might not be loved back. There's a lack of trust in the fact they have a suspicion they feel like, oh, I, but I know, I know that this is my twin flame. Okay, if you know that this is your twin flame, then they should love you back, right? There should be no problem. If the only thing keeping you two apart was the fact that you weren't awakened, then it should be fine, right? All it should take is good communication to restore the bond between yourself and this, this divine feminine. And there's fear. It came out multiple times, right? So examine the fear. Examine the thoughts. Because when you examine your thoughts, you will find the pattern. For example, if this person, their fear, right, is like, what if this person already has someone? What if this person doesn't want me? So, okay, we, get the, we, we understand the thought patterns. Now look beneath that. If this divine feminine already has someone, then what would that imply? That they're not your divine feminine. Maybe this person's afraid of finding out that the person they thought was their partner isn't their partner. That's a natural fear, but is it the end of the world? No. It just means that, okay, so that's where that fear was coming from. All right, got it. Moving on. If they're with someone, that's not my divine feminine. If they don't love you back, that's not your divine feminine. But if the fear of not being loved back isn't because this isn't your divine feminine, maybe it's fear because you don't feel like you're lovable. You don't feel like you're worthy of being loved this way. That's what I mean by look at your thought patterns. Remember the mind, the mind is very powerful. You are manifesting with it every day. This is what people forget, okay? Whether you want to or not, you're manifesting every day. Whether you're aware of it or not, you are manifesting every day, every single moment of your life. Because your mind is always active and your mind is the part that's connected to universal consciousness. So what thoughts are going through your mind? Because that tells you what you're manifesting. If the thoughts that go through your mind say things like, I'm not worthy of this. I don't think I can hold on to this. This isn't mine. I'll never be able to accomplish that. That seems so far away. Then that is what you're manifesting. 
If your thoughts go in the opposite direction and you say things like, I'm so excited about life. I know my goals will be accomplished. I will find my soul tribe. I love myself and I'm worthy of love and appreciation, etc., etc." Then that is what you're manifesting. And you can't trick your mind. You can't say, oh, no, no, that's not what I was thinking. I was just kind of curious. Well, guess what? Your mind is inside of you. It knows what you're <laughs> it, it literally controls every thought you have. So if you notice that you have a negative pattern, go look at why you have that pattern. What's the belief that lies beneath that pattern? Heal that belief. And how do you heal that belief? You start looking, search deep into your subconscious search. Where did that belief come from? Who taught me that? What experience did I go through that created this, this um, neural pathway? Think of it like that, okay? Think of, think of your brain like a giant stretch of land. And every time, or, or rock, because it's pretty, pretty permanent, every time that a new thought pattern is created, it's like a, a really sharp edge passes over the rock. Every time you rethink that pattern, it passes over again. And the groove gets deeper and deeper every time that loop, that thought loop repeats, okay? So when you realize that the, you have a negative thought loop like that, look at the belief beneath the thought loop and be like, okay, so... Is it because I'm afraid I'm not lovable? Is it because I'm afraid I'm not good enough? Is it because I have imposter syndrome? And where did that come from? Start looking for the solution, okay? Once you, I mean, the, the origin. Once you find the root cause of that thought pattern, you go into your subconscious and you heal it. So for example, let's say that it comes back to multiple times that uh, an authority figure in your life told you you weren't, you weren't going to amount to anything or you weren't good at this or you weren't good at that. So you revisit those memories and you change the narrative and you let that person know, hey, in the memory, you let that person know that is you projecting onto me. Maybe you don't feel good enough and you're trying to transfer that onto me. I don't accept it. I reject it. Push it back. And then you start creating affirmations. Affirmations help you create new grooves in your brain, but these grooves will be different. When you create affirmations for yourself, you, like if, let's say that your main concern is that you're not good enough. So you create affirmations. I am worthy. I am intelligent. I am, whatever it is that you feel you're lacking, create the neural pathway that says, no, this is true, not that. You interrupt the pattern every time until you create the permanent pattern over here and you destroy that one. Does that make sense? You do that over and over every time you, you notice you have a negative thought pattern. Hopefully that was like, that was like a short little class on shadow work. <laughs> Hopefully that gave you enough because I can't be here all day, guys, explaining it. But I'm going to try and give y'all little tidbits here and there and, um, and help y'all process that. So tell me about the nine of wands. Oh, wait, actually, let's look at these cards first. So, Nine of Wands. Although there is fear, although there is anxiety, the masculine doesn't want to give up. They're not ready to, to give up the possibility of a connection with this feminine. With the Two of Swords, though, they are indecisive, possibly about how to approach. That's what I feel the most. I think that they are going to approach, but they're trying to decide how they're going to approach. Because what they really want to do is come in and just pour their heart out to this feminine. This is the Knight of Cups. So it's action taking, emotional action taking. But now because this, this feminine feels like the significance of what she means to them also makes them put her on a pedestal. And we all know the mistake that we make with that, right? <laughs> That's a mistake. But it's not like they're doing it intentionally. But putting her on a pedestal makes it heavier, makes it scarier. For example, for example, um, most people don't have a problem saying hi to a stranger, right? But if that stranger is somebody you've admired for a long time, maybe a musician, an artist, um, some some famous writer or author you're putting them on a pedestal because you're like oh my god and then all of a sudden it's really hard to talk to that person because you're terrified 
you're so terrified. You're so terrified of the impression you're going to leave. Then you're, you start freaking out. You get nervous. You get anxious. And guess what? You probably make a fool out of yourself because you're so self-conscious about what you're saying and how you're acting and what you're wearing. And do you smell? And does your breath and this? And like your, your mind is going in all these places. You will behave in a more erratic way because of the fear that you're going to leave a bad impression. That's what's happening here. This person is admiring this feminine so much now that they're putting her on a pedestal and they're putting themselves beneath her saying, oh, ooh, I just looked at the time and it was 3456, by the way. <laughs> I love that. Um, anywho, so they put her on this pedestal. They put themselves beneath her and they're sitting there like, oh my God, what if I mess it up? What if I say something really stupid? What if, and of course, that's just creating more anxiety. So let's see. Tell me about the nine of wands. Seven of Cups. Mm -hmm. Talk about the Nine of Wands. I'm not going to flip it over because it didn't fully flip over, but it was kind of, these two were kind of, I don't know, they're kind of suspicious, you know? Kind of suspicious. One more for the Nine of Wands. One more for the Nine of Wands. Four of Swords, the Ten of Cups, the Son of Cups, again, again, Knight of Cups twice, here and here, with the Five of Swords, because they are, they are tearing themselves apart mentally, because they see this feminine as the ultimate happiness. So, let me put it like this, most people consider money the key to happiness, right? Right? So if you told somebody, if I gave you a million dollars right now, how would you feel? Most people would be in disbelief, like, no way. <laughs> There's no way you would do that. No, same thing. Because this person looks at this feminine like everything. They are everything to them. Which, again, is a little, it's creating, it's, they're creating their own problem. Because they're, they're trying to manifest approaching her they're trying to manifest a connection with her but at the same time they're blocking the manifestation because they feel like no it's impossible there's no way this person will want me the way i want them there's no way that you know if we we've hurt each other there's there's no way and but 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 what if it did but there's no way and so they they create and then they block it they create and they block it they take a step forward and another step back and it's just like come on now <laughs> Because now she's their fantasy. They fantasize about her all the time. They imagine what life would be like with her. They imagine how she's going to react when they show up. And there's good scenarios. There's bad scenarios. There's dramatic scenarios. There's, there's all sorts of scenarios in their head. They don't know which one is going to be the reality. I think what the universe is telling them is that they're underestimating this feminine's healing ability. I think that they're afraid the feminine is still hurt. There's fear that the feminine is still angry at them. There's fear that she's going to chew them out or lash out at them with that five of swords that showed up over here. But she's showing up with the four of swords. She's not showing up in an aggressive energy. Um, in fact, she's pretty good. She's doing well. And then a piece of them is also afraid of that because if she is doing well, does that mean that she doesn't care about them anymore? But again, these two keep showing up as pairs. King and Queen of Wands, King and Queen of Pentacles, King and Queen of Cups. So I think that this person is vastly underestimating the connection between themselves and this feminine. Mostly because they don't see themselves as worthy. Which is ironic because if, if you are somebody's twin flame, then that means you're just as worthy as they are, right? Maybe she's more advanced in her journey than they are, but that doesn't mean that she's above them. That's like somebody saying, oh, this other person is better than me because, well, we're in school together, but they're at a higher grade than me. No, that just means that they know more. It doesn't mean that they're better than you. Does that make sense? Like, it just means that they started school first. That's literally all it means. They were born first, maybe. So is that your fault? <laughs> That's ridiculous. So if this is this person's twin flame, because remember, Mercury, Gemini also rules twin flames. Um, 
I think that they need to they need to just charge and find out. If this is their twin flame, they will be able to work it out. If it's not their twin flame, it's just not. And at least it frees them to be able to move forward. Instead of being this analysis paralysis of what if, what if, what if, no, but what if, no, but what about this? And what about that? Because eight of swords is the, is the analysis paralysis of, I don't want to walk away, but I also don't want to make a move. Kind of just waiting to see if anything happens to give them a sign instead of just taking action. Tell me about the two of swords. Father of swords, ace of wands, finally. Tell me about the two of swords. <laughs> finally, three of pentacles, the world, the hierophant. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so this, again, with that lightning strike, it makes me think that they get some sort of download. They get some sort of information, possibly from a guide, uh, the key. They get the key, the answer. They might not realize it, but they may be working with a deity that is, um, which deities are mentioned? Mercury was mentioned. Hermes was mentioned. Apollo was mentioned. Um, Thoth was mentioned. I think that's all the deities that were mentioned in that card. One of those could be the guide of this person. And maybe it's not just one guide. Maybe they have multiple. But one of those, as this person is in anxiety, it, it's almost like coming up as a prayer. Maybe they were praying and asking for help and they're getting a response. They're, one of their guides is giving them the answer, the solution. And I think that the solution with the, <laughs> with the world card, the solution is just go. You want to build something? It might take time. So I will say there might be a little bit of difficulty because this three of pentacles, the first thing that came to mind was having to climb a mountain. So that's, that's the energy I got. The guys are telling this person the, the key to this problem is that you have to start climbing. You want to get to the top of a mountain, you've got to take action. You've got to do something. Does it guarantee you'll make it to the top? No. But you won't know if you don't try. And maybe it'll feel like you're climbing a mountain, trying to talk to this person, trying to get them to listen to you. But again, you won't know if you don't try. So they were indecisive. But then here they show up with Father of Swords, which is somebody who's very strategic, calculated. They can see far off into the distance, but they're inspired. Their their courage, their bravery has been fired up again. Uh, that, that lightning strike, I'm telling you. They feel ready. Like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> let's see. Tell me about the Son of Wands. I mean, the Movement of Wands. I mean, Movement of Cups. I can't talk. There's the Knight of Cups. Ten of Cups. Tell me about the Knight of Cups. The Movement of Cups. Death, Empress, and Daughter of Swords. <laughs> Ten of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, Seven of Swords. So again, this is this is why they freak out because this had already come out a while ago. That little elephant was the Ten of Pentacles, and then the the crystal picture with the Ten of Cups was the Ten of Cups, and now they came out again. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. They really see this feminine like they could have the most amazing life if this is their twin flame. They feel like we would have we could build a legacy and we'd be so happy and in love doing it. This would be a wish come true. But again, there's that there's that sabotage. They think six of swords, because these are six swords up here, right? If you don't look at the fox, those are six swords. But the fox is sitting on the seventh one. Which means that they haven't fully conquered this fear. They're telling themselves, okay, I'm ready to move forward. But there's still an air here of self-sabotage. They might still... <sighs> do or say something that gives an indication just how nervous they are. But that being said, they really feel like this is worth it. With the death card, they need to know. They need to know if it's finally over. They need to know if there's a chance for a new start. 
they need to know. And what they don't realize with the death card here is that the Empress has also been transforming. The Empress has also been growing. That might be the, the part that throws them off. They already admired her. And if she keeps growing more, they might be a little intimidated. But with the Daughter of Swords here, they've been watching her, which means that that might be why they're a little, they're struggling with it right now, because maybe they're aware that she's been growing. They're aware that she's been, um, they see her as even more attractive now than they saw her in the past. So they're most likely aware of her growth and that's giving them pause but at the same time they're like can't i can't let that stop me i have to i have to keep going <laughs> tell me about the heart of wands or the queen of wands you got the nine of, nine of wands tell me about the heart of wands the lovers Oof, ten of swords but the tower the hanged man I'm telling you, their worst fear, their worst fear is that they show up and this queen says, it's over. This empress will say, I'm done. I want nothing to do with you. That would just devastate them. So I think the universe is taking this time to... To remind this masculine that they are the magician. As they think, they will create. The further away from them they put this feminine, the further away she will be. With the hanged man here is saying you've got to change your perspective. You've got to look at things from a completely different angle. If this is your twin flame, you are their equal. That means that although this feminine may be more advanced spiritually, they may be more advanced in other things, and they are completely forgetting about that. With the tower here, that, that knowledge may also be something that hits them. Um, they may not have felt this part yet. It still hasn't dawned on them that they are this empress's equal. But they're, the good thing is that they're not ready to give up. <laughs> They feel like they can't just walk away from this. Although they're terrified that this is over, it is motivating them. Like It's like the, the need to know is motivating them. Even if it'll devastate them, they need to know if it's over or not. They need to make a move because they don't want to live with the, I could have just walked up and asked and I never did. I, I could not live with myself if I didn't at least try, which I agree very much so. So this is fascinating. Very, very good. Whoever this is for, congratulations. This is, this is the type of masculine energy we need out there. Um, and again, masculine doesn't just represent a man. This could be a woman as well. But, but we're hoping that this masculine continues their journey and addresses their thought patterns so that they keep growing and they keep expanding their knowledge base, their energy, their, their potential to manifest. Okay? So that's what I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to feedback as usual. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.